Hey guys, RPM here. Hope y'all doing well and having a really great day. In this video, I'm gonna be changing the thermal pads on all six of these Zotac 3070 Ti Amp Hollow Edition cards. And so right now, they are all thermal throttling because ever since I stacked all of my frames like this, the heat, it seems like it's being trapped underneath the other frame, like right under there. So these ones are getting pretty hot. Well, actually all, all of them are generally getting pretty hot right now. And so you all know that I have been full time mining Ravencoin on this 3070 Ti rig ever since, I think like the past eight months now. And you know, it's been doing great on mining Ravencoin, but the thermals, it's just horrible on these Zotax. Even when I didn't have it stacked, uh, when it was by itself with nothing on top of it, sometimes it would still thermal throttle. And so I think it's best that I change the thermal pads on these and thank you to gpurisers.com they just sent me a bunch of their 20 watt meter kelvin thermal pads and that helps with the conductivity that's really really good hopefully no longer have thermal throttling on my 3070 ti's so gp risers sent me the two millimeter versions here and then they also have a three millimeter version and if you go onto their website right now which i'll have a link down below you can see that they have a chart it shows which gpus need which type of thermal pad thickness okay so for these zotac 3070 ti's we're going to need the three millimeter ones for the back side and then we're going to need two mil for the front side all right so we're all going to do that in this video, I'm super excited. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Before we do that, I want to just show you guys the Hive OS and just what I'm getting right now in terms of the temperatures and also the hash rates. As we're mining Ravencoin, I should theoretically get about 37 to 40 mega hash, but you can see here that they are, you know, they're getting 31 here, 33, 34. Like they're all thermal throttling. And so, yeah, the temperatures are not looking great. I have the fans at 100, and I, you know what? Actually, what I want to do to see the exact memory temp, as HiveOS doesn't show the memory temperatures, I want to put this whole rig on Windows. Okay, so let me do that real quick, and then we're going to change the pads and see what the difference is. All right, so let me get this on Windows. Oh my God, I just started the miner, like literally like three minutes ago. It took me like an hour to get Windows installed and I am seeing these red memory temperatures, oh my god, over 110, 108. Oh, this is really bad. You can see that the hash rates are now being throttled or like, yeah, it's, it's thermal throttling so the hash rates are going down. I was getting like 37. This is actually the first time I'm seeing these memory temperatures because I've never had this 3070 Ti rig on Windows. So since these have GDDR6X memory, and I believe these are Micron memory, I believe on Micron's website, the maximum operating temperature should be below 105 Celsius. So 110 is not good. Long term, this tells me that this memory, these memories are gonna like die. I, I've had this kind of issue back when uh, the R9 290s, I had them running at like 90 or 100 degrees Celsius and they died after a year. So if I, if I kept these going, mining for the next year, I bet these 3070 Ti's would probably die. Uh, that's something I don't want to try. So guys, I'm going to turn this off because holy crap, that is horrible. These, man, Zotac, you really need to change the thermal pads from the factory. They, they need to put thermal pads either on the back or they just need to have better thermal pads throughout the whole GPU. It's just, wow, that is incredible. That is just... That is just horrible. All right, guys, I'm going to shut this rig down. I already turned off the miner. I'm going to have the GPUs on the table and we're going to take them apart. So let's go. All right, here are all the 3070 Ti's. And I just wanted to show you guys before I take them apart is the stock thermal pads on these 3070 Ti Zotacs specifically. It looks like there is some thermal pads on the back, but there's also a lot of oil deposits coming out of these GPUs. There, yeah, you can see some oil right there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that looks pretty bad. And there's some oil right here. You can see the discoloration on the back of the heatsink here, back plate. 
And they're all showing that. They're all showing that, so pretty bad. Zotac has some really bad thermal pads here that leak, I guess, a lot of oil. So let me take a bit of time to take all these apart and I'll show you guys what's inside. Okay, I got one taken apart fully. I was gonna do the rest of them, but uh, I figured I don't have enough table space. And as well, I don't wanna mix up all the little screws I got here. So anyways, guys, I wanna show you the inside. This is extremely oily from the stock thermal pads Zotac provides on their cards. It's just horrible, just horrible. Look, look at these. Look at these thermal pads here, extremely, extremely wet. And as well on the back side, these thermal pads are also uh, leaky as well, as you guys can see. And it seems like these are really bad thermal pads. You guys saw the memory temps. The, the memory temps are just, just horrible, just horrible. So here's the back side over here. All right, the thermal pads on the back plate over here coincides with this back part here. It looks like there is a thermal pad that just stuck on the back here. And yeah, it, it feels it feels cheap. Definitely feels cheap. I don't think this is good stuff. Obviously, we saw the temps. And also, you know, I, one thing I just wanted to mention is look at the heat sink for the Zotac Hollow Amp versus how big the PCB is on the 3070 Ti. Look at this. It's like the e -peen extension. It's just like, why? I, I get it, maybe because they wanted to have the three fan model, I guess, you know, for the extra fan back here. There is a thermal pad also on the back over here, but uh, it, it doesn't, I guess it just connects the back plate to the uh, heat sink on the front side. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I guess I will change all the thermal pads that this card had. So here's GP Riser's two mil. All right, thermal pads, and I also have their three mil version right here, which is much, much thicker. This feels a lot more clay-like versus the plastic feel on the Zotac thermal pads. So anyways, guys, let me put the thermal pads on and also I'm gonna clean up and wipe off all the excess oil and the existing thermal paste. Oh, I do have new thermal paste here. I'm gonna be using the Arctic MX-5 thermal compound for the GPU die. All right, so I'll do that right now. Okay, here's the back side for the three millimeter thermal pads. And here's the front side. So I've added a white thermal pad there, another one right there, another one right there. And uh, you may be wondering, Red Panda, where's that one on for this middle one right here? And yes, it's on the heat sink. The reason why I did that is because there are two screw holes and so I didn't want to put it onto here in case I when I put the heat sink on I didn't want any of the thermal pad to go into the screw holes here so I put it in just like that and of course I changed the one back here not that I think that will make much of a difference but we shall see just to show you how much thermal pad I used just for one GPU in case some people were wondering so here's the three millimeter that comes as one sheet with gprisers.com so I used about this much okay for the back side all right just to let you guys know and then on the two millimeter thermal pad I used this much so realistically we should be able to do I'd say another I'm gonna say maybe two more GPUs on the three millimeter pad, but then maybe one more for the two millimeter thermal pad. All right guys, let's do it. And then I'll put all the GPUs onto the rig and we'll see what the mem temps are in Windows. Here we go, three, two, one. All right guys, so I've been doing some testing and I did not get great results with the first GPU I changed with two mil thermal pads on the front, okay? And then three mil on the back. That's on GPU number one, all right? So that's the first one. I'm getting 62 degrees Celsius and then 100 memory temp, okay? 100 Celsius on the memory temp. Now, GPU zero, I put three millimeter pads on the front and back, all right? On GPU one. So I didn't do two mil on the front, but I did three mil on the front instead. So you can see I have a 10, Celsius difference here in terms from going from two to three mil on the front. What does that tell you? I, it looks like I'm a little bit higher in the GPU temp 
that's because maybe the thermal pad, the three millimeter thermal pad is pushing, it is being squished. I wish I could show you guys. It is being squished on the, on the cooler, right? So it's kind of like bulging out a bit. So it's probably a little bit higher than what is needed on the, on the GPU die, right? So the temperature is a little bit higher there. But what I did basically on both GPUs, I just made sure I squished both of the, you know, the coolers and all the screws are in all the way. And you can see the difference here between two mil and the three mil thermal pads. So ultimately though, we are getting better thermal conductivity on these GPUs by switching to the GPU risers thermal pads rather than the Zotac stock ones, right? Which is great, which is really great. So I'm gonna do three mil thermal pads on the 3070 Ti's now uh, for the rest of them. And uh, we're gonna see what the result is. But I also wanna mention that I think if we had 2.5 millimeter thermal pads, it would probably be the perfect medium between for having those on the front, okay? And then three mil on the back seems to be just fine. But 2.5 mil on the front, I think would be the perfect size for these, for these Zotac 3070 Ti's. I think I've seen other GPUs out there that may need 2.5 as well. But yeah, every GPU is different in terms of thermal pad sizes. So you probably may need to buy like every single size just to, make, just to try it because all GPUs are different. That's kind of what I did in previous times when I changed thermal pads on other GPUs in the past. But anyways guys, let me change the other thermal pads on the other four and we're gonna do three mil on all the other four and see what the result is. Be right back. All right guys, so I have been at this pretty much all day and I've been playing around with, you know, different thermal pad configurations and I just want to say that I did try another 3070 Ti with two millimeter pads and yeah, they're both, you can see here, 104 and 102 Celsius on those two. The other four that have lower mem temps have three millimeter thermal pads. So that's all well and good. I did run into some issues regarding applying the three millimeter pads, which I will get into in a sec. But I did talk with GPRisers.com, Vistang, the owner of GP Risers, and he said that he applied the two mil on his 3070 Ti uh, hollow amp edition cards, exact same cards that I have, and he said he was able to get much better thermal conductivity in terms of the memory temperatures on his with two millimeter pads on the front. I don't know if I'm applying them wrong on these two 3070 Ti's or what, but you can see here, by applying the three millimeter pads on the front and on the back, it seems like it helped a lot. And you can see, the temperature difference is ginormous from, you know, we were getting like, what, 110, 110, 108 or something before, and now we're getting like 92, 82, 82, 92. Like, I wanna know how I applied the thermal pads much better on these two for some reason. So, wow, that's really, really good mem temp. So, yeah, it's been running for about 10 minutes now. Now, I want to explain my three millimeter pad application in terms of applying the thermal pads. I wanted to make sure I didn't cut too big because the heat sink is gonna push down those thermal pads as it has to match up with the GPU die square in terms of the height. So if the thermal pad is too thick or if it's too tall, it's gonna be squished down. And so actually with the GPU risers is that they are able to be compressed really easily as, it, as they feel like putty. And so you just gotta make sure you have clearance, just some like breathing room, some air room between the thermal pad and the GPU die, the square around the GPU die so that when you're gonna push it down, excess thermal pad is gonna be pushed down and it will just bulge out of the side of the heat sink per se. So all in all though, if I weren't able to compress those thermal pads, it wouldn't be able to have these nice GPU temps. The core temps are really nice. If they were you know, not able to be compressed, then my GPU temps would be much higher because the GPU die wouldn't be able to make contact on the, with the thermal paste on the GPU die with the heat sink. So that's something to be mindful of. But all in all, I talked with GPU risers. They said they're gonna get the 2.5 mil and 1.5 mil thermal pads uh, in the next couple of weeks or a couple months here. And that is what I will test later on. I will let you guys know once I get those in and I will apply them to uh, these two GPUs. I'll actually, I may just put three millimeter pads on these two 
for now, and then I can have good thermal conductivity amongst all of my 3070 Ti's here. So there we go. I think I'm very happy with GPRises.com thermal pads. They, it's a great option, and you guys saw the big difference here amongst the other four. Just a huge, huge difference in terms of the therm memory temperatures. So now I can turn this rig off and put back Hive OS. Actually, no, I'm gonna change these two and then put Hive OS back on. All right, my friends, that's it. Thank you to GPRisers.com for these thermal pads. Just to let you guys know, I did go through three millimeter thermal pad packs, okay? So I have two left and I did, I only used one of the two mil, obviously, because I only applied it to two, two of the GPUs. Uh, in terms of the front side, but I am um, basically, I used a lot of the three mil because that was for a six GPU. So realistically, I use three packs for four of the 3070 Ti's and plus, I guess I used uh, some of it for the back side of the other two for, with the two millimeter pads, all right? And then the two millimeter sides were for the front. All right, my friends, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one and peace out.